Hey everybody, we're here on the DIY backyard farm. It's a little cold. It's uh, springtime. Mother Nature just doesn't know it yet. Anyway, on Pinterest these days, everybody's going crazy over pea and bean teepees. So I thought we'd build the smaller version here to show you how it's done. And I say smaller version because if you want to build one that you could actually go inside, you're gonna need like some eight, maybe 10 foot stakes or bamboo. These are six footers, natural wood, everybody. No treated wood. If you suspect it might be treated, go somewhere else. Make sure they know that their wood is untreated. You don't want chemicals. Natural twine, that's it. What I did in preparation here is brought them together at the top, just like a traditional teepee, tied onto one stake, and then went around them a whole bunch of times to secure it at the top. And they're about a foot in the ground. You don't even have to go that deep, but it's springtime and the ground is mushy, so I wanted to go a little deeper. And again, we're probably only gonna grow peas on here and maybe not make it a teepee, although I think my little photographer, she might wanna go in there and squeeze in, pick some peas. She said how nice it would be to have peas anytime she likes and have a place to hang out and hide. So then, once you have it all set up, all you gotta do is just go around your teepee. I mean, you can have some fun with this and like go round. You don't want to go too tight because then you'll move around your structure. And every once in a while I like to go around twice. And what that does is it keeps your string from getting from sliding up and down the poles, up and down your stakes. I hope you can hear us. It's very windy. We have 30 mile an hour winds on the DIY backyard farm today. Anyhow. Round and round. And I'm going to go around this one twice. Again, remember, that helps it from sliding. If you want to keep your spacing, imagine you were a pea and you don't want to reach too far to the next thing to hang on to. You know, for a pea, this is like climbing El Capitan in Yosemite National Park. So, maybe we'll call this El Capitan. How about that, Giovanna? Okay. Now I'm going to go around this one twice. <clears throat> you get the picture, right folks? We'll be back in a minute finishing this up. Alright folks, we're back. It didn't take long and we've got a web of twine for our peas and then after the peas are done, some string beans to grow up. Now again, this is super easy and very inexpensive. So $3, $6, $9 worth of wood and we live in New Jersey where it's expensive uh, so maybe you'll get yours for less I hope and maybe two dollars worth of twine if that again New Jersey prices folks so we went around and around and around now you can go back and use double the twine and get a crisscross effect like that I don't find the peas need it and the string beans certainly don't need it but if you'd like to do that it's all about aesthetics knock yourselves out you could also start from here go to the bottom and make yourself like a spider web or a cargo net kind of look. Again, I find the peas don't really need it and the kids love to help train the peas. So when they're here and they want to go to here, it takes a little hand to help them out sometimes and that's kind of fun. Also, you want to get the last piece of twine all the way to the dirt down here because that the first ones, you know, you want to give them a chance. It doesn't have to be on the dirt but you don't want to be like way up here with your first one because then you're going to have peas that don't know what to do with themselves and you want them to be tight. So on the bottom, let's say five or six, I go around each pole and that keeps the string much tighter because the wind is really, really rough on a young pea. And what will happen is your pea will break your tendril and then you can kiss the peas goodbye. They just don't like, once they start breaking apart, they usually don't come back too well. So those are a couple of tips for you. Uh, you're supposed to plant peas on St. Patty's Day, but don't follow that rule, because there's plenty of times when that doesn't work out. And uh, from our little piece of paradise, get it, to yours, I wish you happy gardening. Bye now.